it was it's an honor to even sit in the office with Pete and Alice because it's like you get downloads while you're in there talking and then they they just encourage you and they they build you up and and you know it was it was the Lord when we were sitting there talking about everything because you know there's a place in our lives where we got to just get and just say you know what God I need help I need, I need somebody to talk to. I need, I need somebody to come in and, and pull out what's in me. And I need somebody to build me up because we cannot do this alone. That's not what we're here for. We're here, we're here to build the kingdom of God on earth, but it takes each one of us to do that together. We have to get to that place in our walk where we're not prideful. We're not sitting there thinking, you know what? I, I don't need help. I can do this on my own. Sometimes you cannot do it on your own. Sometimes you have to get to that place where you just say, you know, God, I just need you to come and show me what I need. I need you to come and speak to me. I need you to bring me to that place, God, where it's just me and you again. And sometimes we have so much stuff going in our minds that we cannot even get back to that place. We cannot say, God, you know what? I just, you know, I I just can't get back to that place. You know, a lot of times we go through situations, we deal with things in our own lives. Those of us that, that haven't dealt with anything, raise your hand. No, don't do that. You know, we all have problems and we all have situations and there's things in our lives that we deal with and we go to the Lord with those things and sometimes we don't get the answers we want right when we want them. But there is answers because the Lord loves us so much, he gives us those answers. And, and we were talking with Pete and Alice, uh, Apostles Pete and Alice, and I was like, God, and I, I was real with them. It took me a little while to be real with them, right, guys? <laughs> because sometimes we come in and we go to that place and we're just sitting there going, okay, I know I need help, but how can I get help? And so we began to talk, and as we talked, and I was able to share my heart with them. You know, there has to be a place where you can go and be able to share your heart and not worry about what's going to be said or how they're going to think about you. There has to be a place where you feel that, that place where you can say, you know what, this is a safe place. This is a safe place. Even for us as pastors, even for you as a leader, even for you as a husband or a wife, you have to have that safe place. My husband is my safe place. But you know, there's some times that I can tell my husband everything, but I still need that little extra. So you have to find that, that safe place. And we were in there talking, and we were talking about everything that was going on. And I, was, I mean, I wasn't boohooing and, oh, Peter, what am I going to do? You know what? I was sharing my heart with them, how I felt at the moment. See, there's times that we boo-hoo about everything around us, and we don't really share our heart because we're too busy looking at the circumstance and not what the Lord is telling us in our heart. So we begin to talk, and, you know, I I was telling Pete how somebody talked to me, and I I was talking to somebody one day, and they asked me, how could you do what you're doing right now? How can you stand there and praise God the way you praise God on a Sunday morning? How can you minister what you minister? How can you believe everything God is saying when you're going through something? And I told Pete, you know what, how can I not? How can I not go to a place where I know that I can find salvation, where I know that I can find healing, where I know that I can find restoration in anything that I'm dealing with? How could we not? See, a lot of times we question whether or not God is there or not. Because we see situations in our lives and we say, Lord, well, I thought you were supposed to be there for me. Lord, what, why are we dealing with this? We're pastors. Why are we dealing with this? Why are we dealing with that? And, you know, that's the question everybody wants to know. It's not our, no, it's not our understanding. It's by the understanding of the Spirit of God in every situation. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Whatever trial it is, whether it's your child in prison or jail, whether, it, whether it's you not having finances, whether it's you and your, your, your spouse not getting along, it doesn't matter what situation is you're in. You have to get to that place that says, you know what, how could I not serve God? How could I not spend that time with the Lord? How could I not love somebody that loved me so much? much that he didn't care he went and he died on the cross for me see he could have sat there and he could have said you know what I don't know I I I just don't know if I could go and die for Peter Peter's gonna betray me how could I go Jesus never once thought that Jesus said how could I not now he might have said Lord let this cup pass for me 
But he didn't do it because he did, he did not say that just because he, didn't, he wanted to say it. He said that because he said, you know what, if there's another way, let's find another way, God. But even if there isn't another way, I'm still going to be the way. See, we have to get to that place that whatever situation you're dealing with, whatever you're going through in your life, you have to understand people are watching you. See, I don't, I don't know who watches me, and I honestly, it, <clears throat> excuse me, might not sound good, but I don't really care. Because when I worship, it's me and daddy, not me and everybody else. I know some ladies are like, oh, well, your mascara, we're waterproof, girls. It's a tip for the day. You have to get to that place where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with, what situation you're coming through those doors with. That doesn't matter because when you get here, the power of God is here to set you free. See, it's not by chance you're here today. It's not by chance you're watching either because I know the Lord has something for you or the cloud wouldn't have showed up this morning. See, he didn't show up just for me. He showed up for all of us. A lot of people say, you know what, God, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? See, we see the situation. We don't see the answer. See, the answer is Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. You always know that Jesus is the one that brings the outcome for your life. Let's look at Matthew 7 and 9. We got to give you a scripture, guys. Make it legal. <laughs> Joke. Matthew 7 and 9, the Passion Translation, um, we were doing Bible study Wednesday, and Jason did a Bible study, and it was like, he did everything in the Passion Translation, I'm like, oh, why have I not read the Passion Translation? <laughs> you know, I, I was like, okay, New King James, just so that I could understand the Old King James, and so I began to read it, and it, it was like a love letter, the, the word became a love letter to me. So I, read, I was reading my New King James, and I was like, well, let me go and look in the Passion, because I want to know what the Passion says about me. It says, do you know if any parent who will give his hungry child who asks for food a plate of rocks instead, or, were you asked, or, or when you ask for a piece of fish, what parent would offer the child a snake instead? How can we think that God has put us in the situation that we're in? See, that's not who our daddy is. It's saying it right here. How could you think that God put you where you're at? See, the enemy wants to distract us. The enemy is the one that brings havoc. The enemy robs, steals, kills, and destroys, not God. So when we're going through a situation, we have to go to that place where we're spending time with God, regardless of what's going on around us, because it's not God that brought that, that horrible situation in your life. You have to get to that place that says, you know what? God, how could I even think that you put me in this situation? That's how you get to that place where you can say, you know what, how could I not love you? See, it's how you see things. It's how you, you direct your, your eyesight, your vision. Your vision is so key for the season. If your vision is on your problem, that problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. When your problem becomes your, your spouse, then that problem gets bigger and bigger because you don't see yourself and what you need to change. You see what your spouse is doing wrong. Not many amens on that one. Our attitude should always be in a place of gratitude. That's why there's no breakthrough, because there's no gratitude. Because we get to that place, and it's all about attitude. Well, God, if you would just, if you would just, right now, God, change my husband. If you would just right now give me breakthrough so that I can have finances. If you would just right now, God, bring healing to my husband. If you would just right now. But you know what? Look at the process. See, the more that, that you go through a situation, the more you'll spend time with God. Because if God gives you everything, you won't even go to him to pray anymore. Not to say God did it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we have to get to that place of gratitude and stop being in that place of attitude with Papa. We need to remember where we came from, but most important is we need to remember where we're going. Whatever you're in, whatever you're, you're doing right now, wherever your feet are right now in your walk doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where, you know, yeah, it matters where you came from because I know my testimony. 
And I know I use it for the glory of God, but that doesn't matter. What matters is I know where I'm going. So regardless of what's going on in my life, whether it's losing my granddaughter, whether it's pastor going through the situation, whether it's our finance, whatever it is, I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at what God said. I'm looking at what God told me. I'm looking at where I'm supposed to be going. And that gets me to the place of gratitude and not in the place of a bad attitude. See, because in a place of a bad attitude, you won't come to church anymore. You won't call your pastors. You won't call your friends. You won't do work. You'll just sit in your seat and you'll look around at everything else that's going on when God's glory has fallen in the house. You can't even get in that place because you're so looking at everything else and not the glory of God. How could you not love somebody that loves you? How could you not? How could you not go to that place of intimacy when he woos you and calls you even in the middle of the night, but you're too tired to get up because all you think about is the situations in your life. How could you not? When we see everything that God has done for us, we, get, we begin to see the mercy and grace. We don't see the situation and the problem. You see the mercy of grace that's fallen on your life to get you through the problem. See, it's that resurrection power. See, we, we're, man, we're, I think today's Palm Sunday, right? I mean, you know, for those that... For those that know that lineage, today is Palm Sunday. So everybody's sitting there watching Jesus come in on a donkey. When I know the resurrection power of Jesus, he ain't on a donkey anymore. He ain't in the grave anymore. See, it's that power that raised my husband out of that bed. It's that power that's getting us to go past to where we're at, to where we're going. It is that power of God that's within you that can do things in the natural realm from the supernatural realm. But we're too busy being in that place of attitude. We never get to the place of gratitude so we can step into the position that God has given us. See, one thing I've learned through all this process is I'm not who I used to be because now I am who God has said I could be. See, that's where we have to be. It doesn't matter. It's not about, a, it's not about oh, who's, who's doing worship? Is it, is, it, is it Gwen or is it Peter? Oh, who's preaching? Is it Peter? Is it Alice? Or is it Pastor Felix or Vicky? Who's doing what? It's about looking for the glory of God. It's about stewarding the cloud that came in. It's about saying, you know what, God, regardless of what I see, you know what, yes, we have pain. Yes, we have sorrow. Yes, I, you know what, I could have been to that place with God that I could have been so angry with him. My husband's a pastor. How could he get sick? You moved us from Texas to Ohio. How could my husband be sick? See, I see the greater plan. Because when everything is changed, how could we not serve a God that brought healing? How could we not step into everything that God has given us? Because we're grateful. See, our attitude has to change from being ungrateful to being grateful. How could you not say, God, I just thank you. that even ever, You know what? Sometimes we just have to thank God for breath. You know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, my knee hurts. But then God says, at least you got a knee. Not that he's trying to tell me I'm saying wrong. But you know what? There's people that don't have a knee. See, we have to be grateful and appreciate everywhere the Lord has brought us. We have a tendency to focus on the lack and not on the thankfulness of what we have. Gratitude and thankfulness comes from what you believe. It is what the glory that must be in that situation at the time of the situation you're going in. See, God will give, he gets glory out of everything. Everything. But if we're focused on the enemy, then who gets the glory? The enemy. Oh my God, Pastor Felix is in the hospital again. Oh, my God, my finance, every, you know, we all have something. Oh, my God, my wife, my husband. Oh, my children, they don't listen. Oh, here they go again. They're back in jail again. You know what? We need to say, you know what, God, wherever they're at, whatever they're doing, Lord, you send somebody. Whatever's going on, God, you send somebody. My husband was in the hospital, and the Lord kept sending people to come pray for him. And you know what? That was the Lord. Those of you that pray for him, I know that was God. Yeah, oh, I couldn't be there, sis, but I'm praying. You know what? That meant more to me than anything to know that people loved my husband enough to pray for us. But I knew that God was doing something in that process because, you know what? While you were praying, God was working on your own life. 
See, everything that we do in our life always comes back to the Father. But we have to get to that place where we know that it's about the Lord and not about us. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now this is how you get to that place of gratitude. Now faith brings our hopes to reality and becomes the, the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is, the, well, it is all the evidence required to prove what is unseen. See, that's how we get to that place of gratitude. It's not what we see in the natural. It's the unseen. It's to say, you know what, God, whatever I'm going through, God, whatever process this is, God, it is what, what's going to happen on the other side. See, it's the other side of the mountain we need to look at. See, we're too busy looking at the mountain right that's in front of us and say, instead of saying, you know what, geez, I think there's prosperity on the other side of that mountain. I think that there's, 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 there's honey on the other side of that mountain. I think, you know what, I think there's breakthrough on the other side of that mountain. If I can just get to that place where I'm not looking at the mountain so much, but I'm looking at what's on the other side, maybe you don't have to walk over it. Maybe you can just walk around it. See, what happens is we're too busy looking at the thing that's in front of us. We never look at the thing that's around it. You know what, there's breakthrough around that mountain. Let me see. You know, but you know what, I don't have to climb it. I don't have, if I just take time enough to know the Lord is the road, he's the way, the truth, and life, right? So that means there's a way around the mountain. See, we're too busy trying to climb a mountain that the Lord didn't tell us to climb. But it's because we're too busy looking at that, looking at that in front of us and not looking at what's around that, not looking at the future, not looking at what God said about you, not looking at what you should be, what you'd be doing in the spirit realm. You're too busy looking at the natural realm. Jesus. We have to make a choice to step in that place no matter what. That place of, you know what, how could I not? How could I not give you praise? How could I not be grateful? How could I not trust you? How could I not know who you are? See, that's where it comes from. It comes from that intimate place that you have with the Lord to know no matter what you're going through, you know that he's going to come through for you. See, that's what happened. Whenever I would need something, I would tell my honey, I'm like, honey, can I have your card, your credit card? And I would pray to God and thank God that he had money on there to use it. But I trusted him when he said, yeah, here, you can go buy something. See, I trusted to know that he had money on that card because if not, he wouldn't give it to me. See, you have to trust God that when he gives you something, it's because there's something that he's trying to get for you so that you can get something. But you're too busy looking at, oh, well, I don't, I don't know if this card has nothing. See, you start doubting. You never get to that place where you say, you know what, I'm not going to doubt God. I'm just going to trust him. I trust my husband. Now, if I go over there and, and I fall back on him, he probably won't catch me right now, but he would before. <laughs> because I can trust him. See, that's where we need to get with God. You got me. You put me on a chair. <laughs> and see, we have to get to that place with God that we're, whatever we're going through, whatever situation it is, that we're going to trust him wholeheartedly, that he's got the backup plan. He's got the backup plan. See, that's what happens. We get into place and positions in our lives that we think there's no way out of. But he's got that plan for us. But we have to look at it. Now I want to talk about the lepers. How many of y'all know the lepers? I do. I was one, I was one of the lepers. <laughs> yeah, I probably didn't have a lot of spots on my outside, but I had a lot of spots on my inside. See, what happens is, is we look at the, the outside man and think everything's okay, but inwardly, we're falling apart. Inwardly, we're, we're at that place where we're like, God, I just don't know what I'm going to do. These lepers were sitting there crying out to God in uh, Luke 17, 15, and 19, for those that want it. They were sitting there, and they were crying out to God, and they were saying, you know what, Jesus? And Jesus was just walking by. He was just good old Jesus. He just would walk by. That's how he does with us. He just comes in the room and walks by. He waits for us to say, Jesus! See, he's constantly walking. He's constantly looking to and fro to see who he can make himself great in. And you know what? He, Jesus is walking along, and he's just, can you imagine Jesus? He's probably eating a, no, I was going to say an alote. He's eating a corn, <laughs> corn with some chili powder and some, and some butter. Woo! whole lot of glory on that but you know he's just walking with his with his friends and and all of a sudden he hears somebody saying hey Jesus hey we're not doing King James we're doing Vicky's version <laughs> hey Jesus 
Can you imagine somebody coming up to you and saying, hey, I need what you have. Hey, I need healing. I've seen you, and I've seen who you used to be, and I want what you have now. They went to Jesus. They knew Jesus was in town, and they went to Jesus. Hey, it was 10. Jesus, how many of us can come to Jesus on a Sunday morning and go, Jesus, but only one make a difference because he went back. See, Jesus came in there. He was walking by, and they were screaming, Jesus, can we get healed? Come on, Jesus. Jesus loved them. He's like, I'll heal all of you. He didn't care. He didn't pick the one that just was going to come back. See, because Jesus knew the one was just going to come back. He healed them all. He healed all ten of them. He's like, yeah, go right ahead. Then one comes back. Then that one comes back, and he says, you know what? He falls down on his um, it says, one translation says that he fell down at Jesus' feet. Have we ever been so grateful that we just fall at his feet? Have we ever been so grateful that we just come to him in the midst of everything that's going on and say, you know what, I don't care what's going on, I'm just going to come to your feet, Jesus, because I know that's where there's healing. I know that where I can get restoration is at your feet. I know that I can get whatever thing I, I need at your feet. But you know what? He didn't get everything he needed at his feet. He got it when he was up, but Jesus healed him, and he went at his feet because he gave him praise for the healing. See, the healing came the moment he started going down because the praise came before God, and then things changed. The atmosphere shifted, and he came before the Lord, and he just laid himself down. He said, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus didn't ask him for anything else. He didn't come and say, you know what, just because you're going to get healed, you got to pay 20, give me 20, $20. <laughs> Jesus' healings are free. <laughs> Jesus' acceptance is free. Jesus' love is free. It is free for you, for each one of you. He went back and he threw himself at Jesus' feet because he was so grateful. How could I not throw myself at the feet of Jesus? How could you not throw yourself at the feet of Jesus on a Sunday morning or in your intimate time with the Lord in worship? How could you not throw yourself down at his feet? He knew what had happened to him. The moment he got healed, that was breakthrough. That was breakthrough. See, nobody can tell you what you've gone through, but I can tell you where you can go. You can go to that place of breakthrough at the feet of Jesus. So the others walked away. says the others walked away are we going to be the ones that walk away are we going to be the ones that walk away or are we going to be the ones that throw ourselves at the feet of Jesus see there's an invitation for you this morning there's an invitation and he's saying will you come and just lay yourself before me you know what that means? That means just lay all your junk at his feet. Stop carrying that mess. Stop carrying your junk. It's not for you to carry. See, we come to church or we go, we go to that place. I mean, we can go to these awesome services. We can go to these big, big revivals and we can go do all that. But then we walk out the door and we pick up our same stuff. And we walk out the door with the same junk that we brought in. See, God wants us to be free. He wants us to lay it at his feet. That place is a choice. It's in the hope of the Lord that keeps you in that place of how could I not. It's the hope in his strength, his salvation, and his grace, his mercy, and his love. It's not in your doing. It's all in him all in him. And you know what? I always say it all the time. If you get to that place where you don't know where you're going, just step into him. 
Just wear them like a coat. Put them on. Step into Jesus. See, his body was broken, and he was crucified and died for us so that we can just step into his glory. We don't have to beg him. We don't have to ask him, Lord, 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 beg, beg, beg. But no, we have sonship in him. We just step into sonship. That's all we have to do. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18 says, even though the fig tree has no, bl- no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the oil crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle are empty, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God of my salvation. My cattle go, they go. If my family goes, they go. Not to say that you should be there. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in all things, give God glory. Because I guarantee you, the more you look at what the Lord is going to do and break through, the more those things don't matter. Because God will correct all that. Look at poor Job. God, God didn't just correct it. God abundantly blessed Job. Poor Job. <laughs> the guy lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his cattle. He lost his home. He lost even portions of his body. The enemy attacked him in his body. But God said, You just can't take his life. See, even if the enemy comes and he tries to destroy all, he can't have it. You have to press past that place to that place of how can I not? Could not, cannot, either or. <laughs> Woo. <sighs> See, Texas, we say can. Ohio, we say can. Could. <laughs> How could we not love someone that loves us so much? He literally was broken for us. I will rejoice in the Lord and will be joyful in the God of my salvation. See, salvation. It means no matter what's going on, you're still a son. (laughs) No matter what's being done, you're still a son. And if you're a son, everything belongs to you. And if you're a son, you have power and authority to change the situation. And if you're a son, it's that place of gratitude. And if you're a son, then it doesn't matter what comes because the sun always shines on the sun. See, the sun, S-O-N, always shines on the sun. We have to step into that place where we live in a place of gratitude for whatever reason. Alice is always telling me all the time we got to be thankful. You know why she tells me? Sometimes I need that. So I'm here to tell you, today you need that. Today you need to understand that the Lord has so much for you. And you need to understand that breakthrough's coming. But it's up to you. See, God did everything everything. He said, now it is finished. He's done everything. Now it's up to us. See, we have all authority. We blame the devil. No. We have authority. See, how we react to situations gives things authority in our lives. So the more we react to the enemy and what he's throwing at us, oh, he's throwing stuff. He's throwing stuff. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Oh, oh, and then we begin into that place of being a beggar 
and not in that place of sonship. Oh, you know what you're going to do? Okay, fine. You want to do that? That's okay. Well, I'm going to step into worship even more. That's okay. You're going to keep doing that? That's okay. I'm going to lay before my face in the presence of God. That's okay. You know what? I'm going to see Ohio blaze. That's okay. I'm going to make it count. That's okay, devil. Doesn't matter. I'm going to be transparent. So if you don't want to be transparent, if you don't want to hear transparency, turn it off right now. Those online. Is it hard to be in that place? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. See, I could do it in the middle of my husband. Sitting on the bed on the ventilator. I stayed there for three days and I said, Lord, I will forever praise you in every moment of my life. I will not stop praising you. I will not stop worshiping you. But you did not leave us here for this. You did not send us here for this. You sent us here to see the Lord come through in Ohio. You sent us here, God, because we know that we know that we know that God is going to do something great here. And we want to be a part of that. See, I've seen the future after our pastors came in, of course. You know, got to get that little snap out of it. Today, just snap out of it from me. I had to come in with a little snap out of it. You know, but I thank God for that. Because you know what? Alice could have came in and said, oh, poor baby, because I know they felt what I felt. Because they love us. But she did it. She came in with that, the apostolic. <laughs> Boom. No, 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 honey. We're not going to be doing that. You can't. Did I want to? With all, Yeah, with every fleshly part of my body. It took my son's <laughs> To say, you know what? We're not gonna, we're not gonna deal with this. We're not gonna let this enemy win. We're gonna see everything God has for emerging streams. And then even more, I felt like I just put some boots on. I would wish I had Pete's the one with the fire at the bottom. Because <laughs> I sure don't want to do that sometimes. But even more, you know, back in the day when they would intercede, I mean, when there were soldiers and they would go out to war, they would put the front line people with these boots that had big, sharp uh, knives at the bottom, and they're the front guard. They would have these, these shields, not the baby shields. They had the shields that would come all the way up high. And so they would go before... The, the ones that were, that were leading the guards, you know, like the generals. So they would stand firm, and their feet would go into the ground, and their other foot would go down, and it would dig so deep that when the, art, the, the enemy would come, that shield would come up, and they would hold in place because their boots. There was boots that stayed on the ground. There's boots that would stay in the ground when the enemy would come and take them. But then when they would come take the first one, there was another one. When they would come take that one, there was another one. See, the shields would go up immediately, and they would block the generals. They would go down. I can't go all the way down. They would go all the way down on their knees, and the shield would come up, and they would block the generals. No more, devil. You have to get to that place. See, whatever is going on here, you're all a part of it. It's time to get your boots on. It's time to take your boots and dig them in the ground and say, no matter what. I don't care what's going on around me. You know what? I got my, I got my shield up because there's families and lives that are going to be transformed in this place, and I'm a part of it. It's up to you. Yeah, we can have intercession, and we can have all this other stuff, but each one of you are part of that key. Each one of you are holding the shield for the generals.
you're holding a shield. So when the enemy comes to attack, he can't get past you. But it's up to you. See, he can run you over and get to the next person. But I'm going to tell you right now, he ain't getting past me. So if you're smart, you're going to stand behind me. Just serving the devil notice this morning because he tried to take too much from me. See, I studied. I love, I, I, Pete, I love those old movies like that. Those old uh, Roman, I, I, and I'd say, I, I don't know if I would have been really one of those women that would take the water to the warriors in that day. Because I probably would be on the front line hiding under a mask so nobody knew I was in line. You know what I'm saying? Tom girls, we know, y'all know what I'm saying. Because <laughs> I want to be in the mix of it. See, I want to get my hands dirty. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to just sit, sit down when the Lord's moving. I want my face to be all wrecked and jacked up. I don't care if I have makeup on. I don't care if my hair, I, I kind of straightened a little bit, but who cares today? It doesn't matter. You got to get dirty. And I don't mean like, I mean, you got to get to the place where you're going to war with the enemy. You're going to put your, your, your gloves on. You're going to put your boots on the ground. And you're going to go into intercession because there's lives that need to be changed. And they can only be changed through you. Because there's people you know that I will never impact, that I will never know. But I guarantee you that there's somebody there that's chasing your family down. That the same way you're chasing somebody else's son, somebody's after yours. See, I'm not here by chance. I have a family that don't serve God. I have brothers and sisters that are going to prison. See, I'm here because I know that if I'm about my father's business, he's about mine. And they won't rest until they serve the Lord. It's on the air, so I know they'll see it. See, because the Lord wants the best for us. He wants every heart's desire that we have. But I want all of Papa's desires met too. See, that's where we have to come in. That's where we come in. We fulfill the desires on earth because on earth as it is in heaven. See, his desire, his heart is for people. His heart is for the, the lost. His heart are for the ones that are broken. His heart. How could you not? How could you not feel his heart in this place today? See, the cloud came just for you today. The cloud came just for you. What an honor that Jesus just showed up for you. Just lift your hands. Shati kari araba shati. Hori arama shati kari arama shati. Ki arama shati. You know, God of breakthroughs here. I want to encourage you. If you need some new boots this morning, come to the front. Show. I'm talking about those boots that don't matter what goes on, you're going to stay steadfast. You're going to stand. The Bible says stand and stand there for. And some of us are so tired. We're wearing last week's boots, but we need new boots because we need new revelation. We need new understanding. We need new prophetic mantles. We need new for this season. And we're too busy living in the old that we can't even see the new. So this morning, God wants to bring in the new this morning. God wants to bring new revelation. God wants to bring new, new revelation to your heart this morning. God wants you to see everything by the Spirit. It's time that we get to that place of gratitude. It's time that we get to that place of gratitude. So this morning, the Lord said, lift your hands because you know what? There's a new pair of shoes that are going to come on your feet this morning. It is called the shoes of righteousness. It is called the shoes of strength, God. It is called the shoes of renewal, the shoes of vision, the shoes of revelation, knowledge, and understanding. Yes, God. All you got to do is say yes. He's not looking for you to jump up and down or lay on. He just says, all I need is a yes. Woo! 
Are you ready? Oh, I want to go. Oh, I want to go. Oh, are you ready? Oh, come on. Oh, are you ready? Oh, I want to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to go. Yeah, I say yes. Oh, Lord, 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 I am ready. Yeah, I say yes. Oh, Lord, I say yes. Oh Lord, I say yes. Oh Lord, are you ready? Oh, I say yes. Who wants to be a ride and die person for Jesus? Ride or die for Jesus. Just laying your life down for Him as He laid it down for you. As those new boots get on your feet, he's getting you ready for your race. And they don't even have to be heavy boots. You know, God can make your boots however he wants to because they're going to be custom made for your feet. They can be like light boots and you can run and they have comfort in them. And they don't have to be heavy boots that weigh you down, but they're going to be customly made to fit your foot the way that they're supposed to. God, get the army ready, God. Get the army ready, God. How could I not love you? How could I not trust you? How could I not love you? How could I not 
no warrior of all warriors is sitting on his horse right now. He's sitting on the white horse and he's getting ready to command, to command us, to command us because he's not one to ask. He's going to begin to command you. Command you as a soldier that you were always called to be. Before the enemy came and lied to you and made you feel like you were nothing when you were always something. You were always something in the eyes of the Lord. You always mattered. Oh, your voice matters. Who you are matters. Could I not love you? How could I not trust you? How could I not love you? All of my days, all of my days. How can I not love you? How could I not trust you? How could I not love you? Just tell me, how could I not love you? How could I not trust you? How could I not love you? All of my days, all of my days. How could I not love you? How could I not such a war in the heavenlies. Oh, oh, the angels are here. Oh, the angels are here. And they've been in warfare for your soul. Oh, they've been warring for you. They've been warring for you. They've been warring for you and warring for you and taking the hits for you and taking the hits for you. And you're not alone. And you're not alone. <laughs> Even when others didn't want to stand within the porch and the altar. Oh, the angelic was there taking the hits for you. Even when nobody wanted to pray for you because man gives up on you. But God never gives up on you. The kingdom of heaven never gives up on you.
heaven now. <laughs> they are ripe. They are ready. They are standing guard right now. They are to the left. They are to the right. And they are standing tough. Ha 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 Shima. And they are here to command the army of God. Oh, I see them now. Oh, they are standing. They're ready to command the army. The army of God. Word of God says that no eye has seen or ear has heard what the Lord has planned for those that love him. But then I heard the Lord say this morning, but this morning I'm opening up blind eyes and I open up the ears so that you can see and you can hear what I have planned for you today, for this season. No longer will we be stumbling because of what we're going through our situations, but we will be pushing forward and moving forward at a high speed of rate because we can see now and we can hear what the Lord has planned in this place and for you and for me. Amen. Lord, I thank you this morning, Father God, for those that are watching and even those that are here this morning. Oh, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you will give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Father God that we will be laid down lovers, Father God, that we will surrender everything, Father God. We surrender this morning our families. Oh, my God. He is stand, bro. I'm facing the wrong way, I believe, right? I can't even stand. Woo, Jesus! Uh. See, I've seen and I've heard what the Lord has planned. And because of that, I press through. Amen. I press through. And how can I not serve a God that saved me? How can I not give praise unto the Lord that has brought me out of a place of darkness? Are you with me this morning? Because you know what? It's only by the grace and the mercy of God that we're here today. If you're watching right now and you say, and you, you want to give up, keep moving forward. I have to repent. You know what? I said, Lord, I forgive, and forgive me, Father God, for doubting. Forgive me for wanting to give up. You know what? And if that's you, that's okay. But today's a new day, new beginnings. Amen. You know why? Because Jesus is here. I'm not giving up. And you know what? If you can hear my voice, I want you to raise my, your hand right now. And I'm not going to allow you to give up. 
I'm not going to let you just sit there and die and wither away. I'm going to call, I'm going to push you, and I'm going to pull from you what God has placed inside of you. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here. Because I want to see you where God has placed you. And it is not under the enemy's feet. It is not in defeat. It is not in turmoil. It is not in crying and begging. But you know what? It's in a place of sonship and daughters of the Most High God. How could I not love you? How could I not trust you? How could I not love you Jesus. all my days? We're all right on the tip, I'm days. telling you. We're right there. Get ready. Get ready, Ohio. Get ready, emerging streams. All right, we're going to close in this. Let's everybody stand. We're going to do a, a declaration shout with our closing this morning. On the count of three, we're going to do hallelujah. Amen. Amen means it is done. On the count of three, come on, drums. Let me get like a, I want to build up, guys. There we go. Come on, get ready. With everything inside of you. One. Two. Three. Fire in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We love you guys.